What's up everybody, welcome back to Chaos, my name is Lad Tech, and today we're continuing with our series of reaction videos about possibly Michigan, or more appropriately, Cecilia Carter? No, Condent, sorry, Cecilia Condent. No, yeah, Condent, not Condent, Condent. This one we're taking a look at technically what would be a po possibly a Michigan part one, and that is called Beneath the Skin, which released in 1981. So I said we were going to react to this, and we are going to react to this, and I might be taking a look at Not As Jealous Bone either in this one, or in another video if i don't get to that one in this video i might do it in another video just let me know if you guys would want to see that if i don't get to it in this one jen so that's probably not going to happen because it's already hot as fuck in here and um i'm hungry yes also i've been extremely busy lately with my uh, actual job so there's also that however if you want to help make it to where i don't have to stay as busy all the time you can subscribe become a, and turn all the notifications and that'll help support the channel that way or you can become a channel member and pay your tithe and all that stuff and that both of those things help make it to where I don't have to worry about, you know, food or paying bills as much. And so I can just focus on creating more content, which once we get to 10 channel members, I'll start rolling out all the perks and stuff like that. We're already at two, guys. We got eight more to go. So become a channel member. Help do that. And with that, let's just get to the video. Beneath the skin. Let me tell you what a nightmare that that was. Most of the time. It just feels like the news extravaganza that it was, that I got real obsessed with the story, like it captured my imagination. First off, I like what's going on over here, with this little bit of filmography here. Also, I, I kind of wonder if, like, they just had the actress just lay it out on the bed while they just blast a bright-ass light at their face. It doesn't usually feel real, but some days it really feels like it happened that I really did know him, that there really was a body in his closet. So if you haven't, you know, seen the lore, maybe go watch that video real quick. But um, yeah, there's that. There's a lot of backstory there. But spoiler alert for those of you who haven't seen that video. Um, Cecilia Condit, um, she was um, in a relationship with somebody known as the I want to say it was the butterfly killer. But yeah, he actually murdered somebody and hid them in his closet and then got into a relationship with Cecilia. And she lived at his house, I believe, or apartment with that dead body still in that closet. A little bit of lore that you need to know. And then I feel really angry at him. Not for what he did to her, if he killed her, because that's between them, but for what he did for me. And I keep asking myself, just as though I'm kind of haunted. Hang on. Why, why wouldn't you be mad at what he did to her? <laughs> if I found out my spouse was a serial killer, I'd, I'd turn them in. And I keep asking myself, just as though I'm kind of haunted. I keep asking myself, like I was haunted. Is that a freaking New Jersey accent? I keep asking myself. No, 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 that's not New Jersey. That's Boston. It's Boston. Did he do it? Did he kill her? According to the court case, yes. I went to a party and there was this one guy who was a writer there who wrote for an L.A. paper. He was talking about real life stories and he wanted everyone to go around the room and tell one of the most outrageous stories that was real. So I, I was the last person in the circle. We were sitting around this coffee table and everyone told stories. And I must say they were some good stories because people's lives certainly are filled with such good stories. You need to add periods in between your sentences, by the way. <laughs> Or at least semicolons, you know, something. This is just one long run-on sentence. I'm glad her script writing got better for possibly in Michigan. But I knew that I had a story. When I first started to tell it, I was really interested in people's reactions. I would just casually drop it over coffee that there was something really strange that had just happened. That like this footage that you're showing us. That's very strange indeed. That this guy who I've been seeing for the last four years... The police just found a body in his apartment and that it's been mummified and decapitated and wrapped in plastic and stuffed in a trunk where he's kept her for the last two years. Okay, so that, yeah, it was his apartment. So, so at least two of those years, there was a dead body in his closet. How did you not notice the smell? One of the funniest things about it was that when the news first came out and, and it became news all over, all over the television, my mother, it came out that the, the, her head was missing and that they couldn't find it and so my mother who had is that it is that the head <laughs> please tell me that's not the head 
And so my mother, who had all of his pots, these huge plants in her backyard, she was keeping them for him, thought maybe, well, it would be an ideal place for him to hide her head. That's going to be one of the most disturbing things I've ever found in a potted plant. Aside from Brussels sprouts. And so she dumped out all these big plants, and she never could find the skeleton. And then it came out over the news, know that the head was there. It was just packed way down in her chest, and they couldn't see it right off the bat. I don't know which thought is actually more disturbing, to be honest. And also, why would you go through the potted plants if you think there's a head in them? If you think there's a severed head in a potted plant, you call the police and have them look at it. Because if you do that, if you do that yourself... You're disturbing a crime scene. That's bad. I first heard about this whole thing when my best friend called. She said, look, are you sitting down? His name is all over the paper. And that somebody was found in a trunk in his closet. And that had been um, mummified. And then a few days later it came out that it really was her. And that... Uh, the dental records had, um, they were the only thing that, oh, uh, that had been, remained to let, none of her hair was there. Did she have a stroke, like, mid-sentence? The dental records had, um, they were the only thing that, uh, that had been, remained to let, none of her hair was there. I think she had a stroke, like, mid-sentence. And then they found, um, blood in the floorboards of the bedroom that, matched her blood type and he claims he was innocent and framed and I don't know whether to believe him but the evidence is crazy against him he says one thing the evidence says the other but you don't know whether or not to believe him I don't want to sound mean but maybe you shouldn't believe him if literally all the evidence is pointing against him bear in mind Donald Trump said he was framed and he was indicted on all he was convicted of all 34 accounts just let that sink in for a second. I bet Ten Bunny also said he was framed as well. There's plenty of killers that always say they're framed, and it turns out they're lying. Shocker. The reason they got to search the apartment was because her family, after she disappeared for a couple of years, got real suspicious and hired detectives, and they checked the apartment back records and found out that the tenants that lived directly under them complained that there was a bad smell, like some decaying thing had coming from the ceiling in the closet. The apartment below? You, normally that smell goes upward. You know how bad it has to smell for it to seep downstairs as opposed to seeping upstairs? <laughs> That's bad. Like, when you, like, that whole freaking apartment had to have smelled like bleh. And it was real funny, even when they searched the apartment and found the body, he didn't even know why they were taking him to jail. He might just be an idiot. Did you ever think of that? Also, I've noticed this whole time, she's almost got, like, a childlike voice that she's putting on. Like, I've heard her, like, in one of the interviews, like, I actually watched one of the interviews with her and somebody else. And she doesn't have that same childlike voice. She's more, a, she has more, you know, typical voice that an adult would have. But in this, her voice is incredibly childlike. I don't know if she's doing that on purpose or not. And it's kind of freaking me out a little bit. Well, he was out on bail and he skipped down. He's an international fugitive now. Um, he's been caught. And also, if he, <laughs> if he claims he's innocent and then he skips town, he's not innocent. <laughs> I first met Ike at a, at a party that was um, at a, just a block away from where I was living. And I thought he was a real interesting character. He had the kind of energy that as soon as he'd walk into a room, all heads would turn. He was just incredibly magnetic. Yeah, usually the worst type of people have that kind of personality. Uh, I know from personal experience, actually. And he had a huge body. And in the four years that I knew him, his chest cavity really doubled in size. And also I thought that he was somebody I had to be really careful of because he just seemed like he had such, could have such power over me. Sounds like he was abusing steroids to me. You don't grow in two years that quickly at his age. He was living with this girl who evidently, you know, he might have murdered, certainly... All the, all the facts seemed to make it seem like it. he might, must have done it. She had just gotten an apartment across the street, and they had sort of like broken ties. 
um, not broken up, just basically she was interested in somebody else. And he, you know, it was he was real clear, you know, he was seeing me. Kind of sounds more like he wasn't quite over her. And he was only with you to basically, how do I word this? Almost like, almost like, you know, like when somebody is like, ah, see, I don't need you. I've got this other person. But they don't actually like them. She was a dancer who really wasn't strong enough to be a dancer. And she was kind of um, sick anyway, you know, like meant emotionally she was a little unstable. I always thought like she was epileptic and I'm diabetic and I kind of identified with her. Were you just trying to assault the dead girl? I, that might just be my autism talking about. It sounds to me like she's insulting a dead girl. I don't know. My mother always thought that he killed her, but I thought, oh, you know, people just don't go around killing people. Evidently they do. Right after she disappeared, he took all the clothes out of the closet and hung them on a rack on the bedroom wall and then locked the closet. And I thought that that was a little strange, but I never thought there'd be a body in the closet. And apparently you never used a closet, ever. And then about a year later, he moved all of his clothes back and her blankets that her mother made, he kept on top of the chest. So I was always sleeping under these blankets that were kept on the trunk that had her body in it for that's actually quite disturbing to think about. <laughs> Holy shit. Back. And her blankets that her mother made, he kept on top of the chest. So I was always sleeping under these blankets that were kept on the trunk that had her body in it for two years. And I didn't have a sense of smell at the time because I was on medication, so I couldn't smell a thing. You would smell that. Trust me. If you ever smelled a, you know, a, have you, have you ever been driving along and, you know, you get a fresh whiff of roadkill all of a sudden? Imagine that, but like a hundred times worse. And before you ask, no, I do not know from personal experience. And I thought whether he killed her or not, I felt I'd never feel comfortable, and I'd never know. And it seemed like a hell of a way to continue a relationship if I felt I'd never be able to be sure. And in actuality, there were so many emotional things that happened to him about the time that she disappeared that I felt that if I hadn't seen that, like, he didn't go out. He had all his food. She failed to finish a sentence. Maybe she is having a stroke. Like, he didn't go out. He had all his food sent up. He shaved his head and his beard. But people didn't know this, because he never went out. Nobody saw him upset, but he was upset. And apparently he didn't have a job either. How did his co-workers not notice? Nobody saw him upset, but he was upset. He was very upset. And we would talk for the longest time about what would make a person disappear. And I kept saying, well, she's only disappeared for three weeks. There's no reason to be this upset. No reason to think she's not going to come back. That sounds like something the killer would say. And I thought, how peculiar that he should be this distraught when all she's gone is for a couple of weeks. Do you know that I still wonder about whether he killed her? Gee, do you think that he killed her? Gee! Yes, she, he did. He did kill her. The, all the evidence points towards him killing her. And he also fled the country, which kind of uh, attests to the fact that he is guilty. So yes, it's no longer a question. He killed her. Gee, do you think that he killed her? Gee! Gee! Does anybody know? A, B, C, D, E, F, G! G! G.I. Joe! What the fuck was that? I think her Percocets just kicked in. Hey, Joe! Where you been? You got plastic arms that never bend, but Sterilia is for realia. Oh, Talk to us about Barbie and Ken. Barbie and Ken. Ken a friend. Tell us all about Barbie and Ken. Barbie and men. Ken and men. And how their friendship never ends. Ah, first you're dead, you're back to life, it's a doll life, it's- The fuck is this song? I'm gonna have nightmares for weeks now. He always said, well, when she feels like coming back, she'll be back. The whole thing was just so crazy. It was just as though she was a possession of his. That's how psychopaths need to view other people. Like, she was a space that wasn't being occupied, and so he absorbed her. 
and after he absorbed her, he became like her. It was as though he consumed her innocence and became like a child. We call that abuse. Well, he was better in a few months and started going out. When, and we never went out of his apartment for the first two years that we were seeing each other, so people never knew that we even saw each other. Which really makes it seem more like a fantasy and that I'm making it up. Yeah, but it actually did happen. Sorry, but sometimes truth is stranger than fiction that way. This whole murder thing was sort of the icing on a cake in terms of a certain violence that had happened over a ten-year period. And I started to realize, if I courted violence too much more, I might get myself seriously hurt. <laughs> I think Cecilia might be going a little bit crazy now. It just makes me wonder what has been said by this whole thing. The weirdest thing was that I never saw the body. I never saw the dental records. I never saw anything. I just read about it in the paper, or friends of mine saw it on the news, but it never was real. It was just a bizarre story that somehow happened to my life. Oh, it was real. It was definitely real. We have lots of evidence suggesting that it was, so there's no way to deny it now. But I had this dream that was so real. I dreamed that it was me and not her that he killed two years ago. And that's another story. And that story is possibly in Michigan. Yeah. Hopefully I put it in the card or otherwise that's, that's going to make no sense. But yeah, so that was uh, Beneath the Skin by Cecilia Condit. I don't think we have time to go over the other one that I kept saying I'll go over at some point. And it does kind of go over a little bit about the um, finding the body and all this stuff. That's mainly what this was about. And then it kind of segues into like sort of into like possibly in Michigan. So yeah, that's that whole thing explained there. And it was pretty interesting. And also, why did you just randomly break out into song for no reason? <laughs> Maybe she did go a little bit crazy after finding it out. Who knows? But let me know what you guys think uh, in the comment section down below about your thoughts, theories, and opinions, whatever. And uh, also, you can check out our Discord and uh, suggest things for me to react to over there or in the comment section as well. If you guys like my content and you want to help support me further, you can subscribe, become a channel member, all that stuff. Basically, become my cult member and pay your tithe. And then I'll have more time to dedicate towards making more videos like this throughout the week. I want to actually start working back up to where I'm doing like four videos a week, but I've currently had to put that on hold since I'm actually more busy now. Than I was back then, but yeah, keep the dream alive. Also, also keep on the lookout for my next video uh, coming next Wednesday. But for now, thank you guys so much for watching. And if you enjoyed it, feel free to show me some love down below by hitting the like button. And don't forget to check out the annotations for more videos. Now, I'll see you in the next video.